Hey there, the, um, this video is called That Son of a B Chord. I had that darn F chord before and both of these chords are problematic for beginners in particular, but for all guitar players we struggle with them. And we often find cheaters in ways around playing them if we don't feel like playing them. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple of those as well. But um, I want to get you started on playing the B chord and um, really I chose the B instead of the B flat. B flat is actually even a little harder because the frets are a little bit further apart down here. Uh, but I just chose B because it was funnier to say uh, son of a B chord than son of a B flat chord. So that's why I chose B. All right, so um, the first thing you can try to do is just before on the F chord, what I had to do was play to bar all six strings and try to get all six strings to ring out with your bar. Okay, We're, the nice thing about the B chord is that we only have to bar five strings. The problem though is you don't want that low E string to ring out because that would just be kind of muddy. It's not part of, unless you want that chord, that would be B over E. And it's kind of pretty, but it's not what you want, especially if you're playing B flat or if you're playing C sharp. You know, there's a lot of chords where that E string is not going to work. So you want to bar five strings, but you want the tip of your first finger to touch that sixth string to deaden it. Okay? So it sounds like this. And then, and you notice I'm not pushing down. I could lay my second finger on top of my first finger, um, but the problem is I'm going to need that second finger. So it's better to kind of try to get some sound out of this. And so what you're going to find you're going to have to do is kind of tighten your grip a little bit, get your thumb behind the neck. Okay, you'll see that my thumb is right there. All right, and you're you're going to want to, and then what you do is just go up the fret. Fretboard, just go up, go to the you know third fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, try to get all those notes to ring out. And I'm using my second finger, I'm not supposed to. And if you want to check your work, pluck each note individually because sometimes when you strum all of them, one of them might be dead and you wouldn't hear it because you have four of the five ringing out, but one of them's dead. Now, ultimately, we only need the bottom one and the top one to ring out to play the major chord. So, this is this skill and this exercise is a little bit overkill for the chord. However, we do have the problem where when we go to make the chord, unlike the F chord where the next fret we're going to use is one fret away from the bar, the next fret we're going to use is two frets away from the bar. So we have our bar at the second fret and then all four, all the other three fingers are going to be at the fourth fret. So we've got this gap here and that's, that's where you're going to have a lot of struggle. Your finger's probably going to slide down maybe, um, but you're just going to have to, you, again, this would be one that's a little bit easier up high, and then you can bring it down and try to get it to ring out all the way down, all the way down to B flat. And basically, the B chord is just the A chord. You know, a lot of people will play A chord with four, uh, these three fingers, the first, second, and third finger. Okay? If you play the A chord with the second, third, and fourth finger, then you've basically got the shape you need to make the B chord and any of these bar chords. So, um, and I intentionally, intentionally chose this, the Gibson Folk Singer because it's actually one of the harder guitars to play. Um, and it has, it has the most real estate you have to cover. It's got almost a classical guitar. In fact, I think it is really the same width as a classical guitar, which is pretty wide. Um, and yet it's steel strings. So, once you get that, three fingers down here then you can start to move them up and put the bar behind it and it's the gap again that's going to be the problem for you probably but just just keep working it and you'll eventually get it now this has also been called when I was growing up they called it a double bar chord and the reason was some guys would play some guitar players would play like two bar chords like this like bar your first finger and bar the third finger and you might do it if you were going to do something like that uh, the only problem you have here is you risk flipping off your audience. And I play a lot at churches and that's not a good thing. Okay, sometimes I might use my pinky. Like sometimes I'll use my pinky. But one of the things you don't want that top string to ring out because um, you want to kind of deaden it or just don't hit it. Because otherwise you're not making a, a B chord, you're making a B6 chord. And that may not be what you want. A B6 chord has a different flavor and kind of a different quality than just a pure B chord, a pure major triad, okay? I did have one student, um, I'm not be able to do this, I can bend my joints back on th 
three of the four fingers, but on my third finger, I cannot. But I had a student once that it could actually bend that joint backwards and was able to bar and get the first, uh, first string up here and the fifth string with the first finger and then just bar just those three strings with the third finger. That was pretty freaky. Um, and if you can do that, cool, but uh, it's probably not likely. Uh, that's a rare trait. So, so this is the B chord, so practice this. Um, and one thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to practice it from to and from other chords. You know, it's one thing to grab the B chord, but if it takes you 12 seconds to actually make it and get it sounding good, it's really of no use. So what you can do, and I don't suggest playing entire songs or strumming, you know, um, eight strums of E and then eight strums of B. I suggest just doing one of each, just one of each, and then B, E, B, F sharp maybe, to B, G sharp minor, to B, or F, to B flat, you know, C, to B flat. Um, chords that are common. I wouldn't necessarily just do random chords like F to B, because that wouldn't be a very common chord progression. It wouldn't be um, worth your time to work on that. If, if it ever came up, you'd have it down, but it's not critical. B, F sharp to B would be more common, because they're in the same key, in the key of B. E is also in the key of B. G sharp minor, key of B. Okay, C sharp minor is also the key of B. And then a couple cheaters. Okay, we can do like a power chord and then leave the B string open. The problem is we have the E string. That would not be a B chord if we hit the E string. This would actually not even be a B chord here. This would be a B5 chord or a B power chord. There's no third here. So this would work over either B minor or B major. If I hit the E with it, okay, and I'm playing one, I'm sorry, first finger on the second fret of the fifth string, third finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string, pinky on the fourth fret of the third string, and then the top two strings open. That's B sus. And I might use that. I'm in the key of E or something. Because I just like the sound the way it sounds kind of droning. Okay, so like a helicopter. It sounds very droney like a helicopter. All right, so um, another che cheater B could be if you take E chord, okay, and we're gonna play it like this, E chord like this. Uh, this one's kind of weird, but if you just move everything up one string, so you're on the bottom three strings, technically that's B. If you deaden with your first finger, if you deaden the set of the third string, and hit the open B string, and then put your pinky down here on the F sharp, Technically, that's a B. Okay, now the, pro the problem is not, you don't want the F G sharp and you don't want the G to ring out. That's a little bit tough to kind of get that center. But you can play just the bottom three strings if you want. Another thing you could do is sometimes you can substitute B7 for B. If we're in the key of E, the five chord would be a B, or B7 would also be one of the variations on the five chord in the key of E. Okay, no quiz on this later, but just, just so you know. So that's, B7 is much easier to play than B. Ironically, see there's an example of where a chord has a crazy name, or a more complex sounding name, but it's actually easier to play. <laughs> so B7 would be nothing on the bottom string. Uh, second fret, first fret, second fret, open, second fret. It's a four finger chord, just like B is, um, but it's a little bit easier to play. But B7, a seventh chord, will have a different flavor than a major chord. If you're playing a pop song or if you're playing a, um, you know, a folk song or something like that, it might be a little bit old timey sounding to have the B7 as a substitute for the B. Okay? So hopefully that helps you uh, conquer the B chord. Um, I'll put a link in the video so that you can find the video I did uh, called That Darn F Chord and um, get them both down. The great thing about both those chords. 100% movable, so when you learn one chord, this, this one chord, you're actually learning 12 chords. That's what's cool about the guitar in particular. B flat, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, or E flat, E, F, F sharp, or G flat. You're learning a bunch of chords. Now, if I were on electric, I could literally go all the way up to the 12th fret, but um, uh, basically you're learning, you're learning the dynamics, you're learning the the shapes and the sounds of 12 different keys in 12 different chords, okay? God bless you, I hope you're doing well, and uh, we'll talk soon.